Hey everyone, welcome back to the DevOps Lab. I'm Damien Brady and today I am joined by Michael Levan, who's going to show us how we can combine GitHub Actions and Octopus Deploy to kind of give you the best of both worlds. It's actually super easy, don't miss it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the DevOps Lab. I am Damien Brady and today I have the pleasure of being joined by Michael Levan from Octopus Deploy. Michael, thanks for joining us. Of course, yeah, thank you for having me, it's a pleasure. Yeah, so Octopus Deploy, obviously, you know, a special place in my heart. That's where I worked before I worked at Microsoft. Um, and I was, I spent a little bit of time working for Octopus in um, Toronto, which is kind of east coast of North America. You're in New York, correct? Yeah, exactly. I'm actually in New Jersey, but it's literally yeah. like two to three miles away from New York. So it's, I'm, I'm right there. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm in Brisbane, which is kind of the home of Octopus Deploy. Yeah. But I, I remember there were some challenges with time zones and things like that. It's it's nice to see, though, that there's a bit more expansion um, kind of globally within within Octopus. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's uh, it's one of those things where I feel like I've been working in, in several different companies. And when I was, you know, running my own thing where I was never in the same time zone as anybody else. So it was uh, one of those things where I would say set some time on my calendar. And if it was uh, 3 a.m. or 8 a.m cool <laughs> yep oh, time zones the eternal problem <laughs> yep so we um we were chatting a bit um about a few things but one of the things that that kind of um piqued my interest was uh you made a point when we were talking about choosing devops tools and look there are advantages to um using a single tool for kind of your end-to-end -end, um devops pipeline all of that kind of stuff but there are some tools that are better at certain things and some tools that are better at other things. And you made the point, which really resonated, that you don't necessarily have to choose a single tool. Um, combining these tools together um, is getting easier and easier, um, which, I, I, yeah, really resonated with, with me, kind of choosing that, that right tool for the job. Yeah, no, absolutely. And you hit the nail on the head there where, you know, you could have a bunch of CI tools, a bunch of CD tools, or a bunch of CI CD tools. And even though they're all in the same ballpark, there's always going to be one that does something a little bit better than the other one. And that's why, you know, at this point, it's it's almost like we're seeing a new tool every week. So yeah, you know, yeah, right. right now, it's, it's one of those things where there's so many great things being developed and, and being shared with us and we can use them. So why not try to put them together when the time is right and when it works for the workflow itself and for the application? Yeah, for sure. So uh, Octopus especially is, is very much a dedicated kind of continuous deployment tool. Yep. Um, one of the one of the tools that's getting a lot of um, attention within Microsoft and externally as well is GitHub Actions um, as a CI CD tool, um, primarily as a CI tool. Um, you mentioned as well that you, you see quite a few people joining these two tools together or integrating them together. Um, so I thought it would be a good opportunity to have a look at what that actually looks like in practice. Yes, absolutely. And uh, I can share, share my screen and we can jump right into a demo. Awesome. Yeah, so you should be seeing my screen now and I have four tabs up here. So the first tab is the actual GitHub Actions workflow itself. And, uh, you know, I decided to, of course, write this code out because I don't want everybody to have to watch me type for 36 lines. <laughs> so, yep, yeah. <laughs> so what we have here is we have a workflow and what this workflow is doing is number one, it's setting your environment variables and you could either do this through secrets or you could do this through environment variables because this isn't, you know, sensitive data. I don't really care if this is shown, so it's perfectly fine. So the first thing that I'm doing is passing in my project. So why am I passing in my project from my Octopus Deploy instance? Well, if I head over here, you can see here that I have a few in, uh, a few projects here, and I'm gonna click on this one project, and if I go to my processes, I can see what I'm gonna be running, you know, in Azure Script, for example, and then if I go to my overview, I can see my deployments. Now, of course, I only have one in here. This is a demo environment, but the idea is, is that from GitHub Actions, what I can do is I can build a command line interface tool essentially with octopus deploy cli 
And then what I can do there is I can I can essentially do anything that I can do in Octopus. You know, it's very much like using the Azure Cli if you want to get a job done. Uh, but you know, of course, using the Octopus Deploy Client. So what I can do here is I can actually install the Octopus Deploy Cli because you know, as you know, uh, in GitHub Actions, it's a virtual environment on the back end for the builds. So I can pretty much install anything I want um, depending on the build agent that I'm running. So in this case, I'm using Ubuntu Latest. Um, and then at that point, you know, like I said, I can use sudo apt get. I can install everything that I need to to get Octopus Deploy uh, Cli up and running. And then I have a few different steps down here. One is to create a temporary directory for deployments. And the reason why is because when I run this list deployments here, I, I need a place to store it. So let's say I want to make, you know, for example, a cron job where I'm going to be listing out deployments every 12 hours, or I'm sorry, every day at 12 a.m. And, you know, maybe your boss needs it, or maybe you just want to see what your deployments are looking like overnight. You know, we were talking a lot about how, you know, we're working in all different times in the world, you know, at, at uh, 9 a.m. by you and at 7 p.m. by me, give or take. So, you know, maybe you want to know what's happening overnight. So what you can do is you can list your deployments out, but again, you need a place to store it. So I'm going to push it out to a TXT. And then what I can do is I can go ahead and take those deployment lists and then store it in Azure Storage. Nice. Yeah. So, so that, that's, um, that's an interesting, a really good point. That first step that you've got there, yeah. because these are kind of disposable agent environments um, that, that run your workflow in GitHub Actions, exactly. being able to just install a command line tool like the octo.exe tool um, yeah. means that you can pretty much do anything. So that octo tool, um, if I'm right, basically lets you do anything with that octopus deploy instance as long as you um, have control have permissions to do it, right? Exactly, yeah. That's actually one of the things that I'll show to add the, the, a secret in, but literally all you need is an API key, that's it. And then other than that, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And it's definitely one of those things where, especially this first step, I mean, I I use this all the time. Uh, even for, you know, one of the circumstances that I've had recently is I needed a specific version of Terraform to test something. So I just, you know, install Terraform like I would on a standard virtual machine or something like that, except I can do it in the build agent here, uh, which obviously makes it, you know, very cool, um, especially having the ability to move away from like, you know, those on-prem or those, you know, self-hosted build agents. You can just yep. use whatever's in the cloud for you. It's there, it's available. You can install anything you want on it. And then when you're done with your workflow, it it gets thrown away anyway, so. Yeah, you're right. So that, that would be another option if you had your self-hosted one that already had the tool on there. But obviously then you need your own infrastructure for it. Um, this way, yeah, you can use, just use the cloud stuff. It's, that's great. Cool. Exactly. Yeah. Like very rarely at this point do I see anybody doing self-hosted agents. Um, I do see like a few people doing the Docker hosted agents and like Azure DevOps and stuff, for example. But like nine times out of 10, you're always using the cloud-based agents because it's, it, you don't have to do anything. It's easy. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Cool. So, uh, so yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go completely from scratch. The only thing that I'm going to be copying in is the code itself. So, you know, you're going to be able to see a step-by-step -step workflow uh, to get this up and running. So awesome. the first thing that I'm going to do is I have this repo here, just Octopus Live Sessions. It actually doesn't matter what code is in here because we're not realistically pulling any code, building it, deploying it, testing it, anything. All the code that we need is in that workflow. So I'm going to go to actions here. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my own workflow. I'm going to click on this. And then as we know, this is going to come out with, you know, a, a custom workflow where, you know, it's it, it kind of has like the, the templated options. And then you can pretty much throw in anything you want. This is typically what I start out with. Um, so what I can do is just delete all this here. I'm going to go back to my code. Copy this out. All right. I'm going to add this in here. So now at this point, what I can do is I'm just going to go ahead and change that to main here. So now I can start my commit. However, before I start my commit, I need to add in a few secrets. So the first secret is going to be how do I actually 
access Octopus. So if I go to my settings here, I'm going to go down to secrets, and this is where I can start adding in my secrets. So I'm going to click new secret. I'm going to actually go back here. I'm going to go to my settings. I'm going to go to secrets, and I'm literally going to copy and paste this in. So we got the API key, okay? And then if you want to pull your API key from Octopus, you can simply go to your profile. You can go to my API keys. You can generate a new API key. And then I'm going to have this API key here that I can pass in as a secret. Don't worry, I'll be sure to uh, delete this. <laughs> <laughs> before, before publishing, yep. Cool. And then uh, I'm going to click Add Secret here. So that's step one. How do I authenticate to Octopus? And then the other step is how do I authenticate to my Azure storage? I need to be able to take the deployment TXT and put it into my Azure storage. So what I'm gonna do with that is, I actually I just created this new storage account here. I'm gonna go to my resource, and then I'm gonna go to access keys. And what the specific step in GitHub Actions want, wants is that connection string here. So I'm gonna copy my connection string out. I'm gonna create a new secret. I'm gonna paste that in. Go back to my secrets, copy the one I had originally, paste that back in, and then add my secret. So now I have two ways of authenticating with my GitHub Actions workflow. One, I'm authenticating to Octopus, and then the second one, I'm authenticating to the Azure Storage account. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close out of these. So now we and should. So those yep, those secrets are used in, in the steps further down, correct? Yep. Yes, exactly. So you're going to see the API key that I'm passing in right here. Got it. Got and then you're also going to see on line 34 that I'm passing in that storage account connection string. Awesome. Yep. yep. So what we can do is we're just going to we'll leave this open. All right. We'll go back and then we can start our commit. So once we start our commit, essentially what's going to happen is it's going to start once I push to master. So the second that I push that out, it's going to start the build process. And then also, I also have a schedule here where, I'll, where it'll do it every day at 12 a.m. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to click start commit here. And then I can just uh, add any type of description. So test list deployment. And then I have an option here whether I want to commit it to master or I want to create a new branch. This is where uh, you know it, I'm gonna I'm gonna use my favorite phrase of it depends. So <laughs> depending on how you're kicking off your workflow, like I'm kicking it off from master right now just because this is a demo. But perhaps you have a specific workflow that you want to kick off for like a development environment or something like that, or maybe you're working on a new feature and you want to kick that off. So, but in our case, we'll just commit that directly to master. Then I'm going to click the commit here. And then once I do that, I'm obviously going to have my uh, YAML file here. I'm going to go up and boom, we can see that this is automatically triggered for us again because we had that trigger step in there. So once anything hits master, it'll take off. All right, we're going to click on this and we can see this in progress. We can confirm that it's in fact the workflow that we were just using. So I'm going to go here. So the first step, of course, is going to take a little bit longer because it's literally going through in that Linux environment, doing the updates, installing all of that good stuff. So uh, you know, while this is going on, did you have any questions specifically about the workflow? Um, I think so. I think one point that's probably worth um, highlighting again, and maybe we can get to this again at the end, is is sure. just the the things that are available um, to you from that Octo command line. Yep. Um, I imagine it's, it's exactly the same as when I worked there where it's basically everything. So if you wanted to trigger a deployment um, and a release of, of all of the code, you know, you could do the build in actions and then just tell Octopus to go and do, do its deployment. But maybe we'll maybe we'll hit that at the end because this was very quick. Yeah, this is yeah. actually quick, yeah. <laughs> so cool, yeah. So we are all good here. So let's just go through the steps really quick. So the first thing is, of course, well, installing the command line here, and then we're creating that uh, temporary deployments directory, and that's specifically so we can take the list of deployments from Octopus Client and we can push it in somewhere. And then we can do the list releases here. I'm specifying my dev project group. Remember, if I go back here, this is going to be this project right here. Yep. 
And then the Azure Storage Account, of course, this is going to be the thing that's consuming that data from the Octopus Climb. Yeah. So now what I can do is go to my storage account. I'm going to go to my containers. So now we see that container here. I click on deployments and then boom, here's my deployments.txt. Nice. And, and so you, you might want to, yeah, you might want to examine that data over time. Exactly. Um, pull it into some kind of machine learning if you want. And, you know, you could do, you could do anything with this, clearly. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, you, you could pretty much do anything with this. Like if I click edit, I can see that it's showing for my project, you know, the deployment that I have, aka one. So what I've seen, you know, well, myself and others use this type of tool for and just to pull this type of data is the simple fact that, you know, it even goes back to like when we used to do reporting. I mean, there's been so many times, you know, in the beginning before a lot of people started automating that it's like you walk in on Monday morning and you got to manually run those reports to see what was going on in the environment uh, or sometimes even yeah. daily if, uh, if you had some bad luck. So <laughs> this is, you know, yeah. one of those things where it takes that process out, that sysadmin process, and it just automates the entire thing for you and and literally you don't have to do anything i mean you could check it if you want to or you could even set up an alert for yourself for if this brings back some sort of data that you don't want trigger it you know a pager duty alert or something like that if you wanted to that's pretty awesome one thing i noticed as well is in that um github action the yes. workflow when it actually ran that api key and this is part of the reason you might want to do it but the actual run itself um when that uh when the log was written out, that API key is is hidden, and that's why you might want okay. to use secrets. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's a really cool thing. I mean, of course, like you got to generate the API key. So that's that, and then the storage account and connection string. I mean, that's probably the only manual steps. Um, mm -hmm. But I mean, to be honest, like if you wanted to, you could even have a GitHub workflow that would go out, maybe create an API key for you or something like that. But regardless, you would still have to start with some API key because you got to be able to be able to authenticate for that on automation process regardless. So yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Uh, that I mean, that's a pretty clear demo of like integrating these two two tools yeah. together. Um, yeah. If people want to if people are using Octopus now um, and they want to know what they can do and how they can do it with that octo.exe tool, um, we can put some links in the show notes for sure. Um, yeah. But the documentation on that uh, octo.exe or those command lines ELI um, is pretty uh, comprehensive, I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that's one of the things that I actually really love about our documentation is the fact that like it's very straightforward. You know, there's there's really no fluff. It's really just straightforward. Here's what you need. Here's how you get to it. So literally, if you just Google Octopus Deploy Cli, you're going to come up with a download page, and then there's also going to be a list of you know all the different actions that you can take, uh, listing stuff, creating stuff, all of that, and then you click on it, and then you'll get some examples there and see how to do it. So yeah, it's it's very very straightforward so that's really cool that that's a really clear demo of how you can use those two tools together but you know like like you were saying you don't have to choose a single tool you don't have to choose two tools you don't have to choose three like yeah. choosing the right tool for the job is is super important yeah no absolutely and, and the other thing too is, is you know these tools as we know i mean they work in the cloud they work on prem if you got to automate something in your hyper v environment or you have some on-prem servers that you have to automate. I mean, it's it, the, the list goes on and on. You could really use this exact type of workflow, you know, or workflow similar for really any environment in any environment. Yeah, yeah which obviously awesome. makes it very cool. Definitely. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for showing us this. Um, and yeah, it was really good to chat. Um, and for everybody else out there, uh, stay tuned. Make sure you catch us for another DevOps Lab soon. Mm -hmm.